as I said, the theme of this session is quality, ranking, and accreditation. I request the chair to begin with the session. Professor K.K. Agrawal. Uh, thank you, friends. Uh, I welcome all the colleagues here, and uh, it's a privilege to present this session before our Honorable uh, Minister of Education, Sri Dharmendra Pradhanji, Honorable Governor of the State, Anandiban Patelji, and uh, all my colleagues. Friends, since yesterday, people have been asking me about the when the NIF is being declared. So before I start the session, I had a word with the Minister Saab, and he has kindly agreed to declare NIRF this year on 14th of this month. So on 14th, 11 o'clock, we will have a online uh, gathering of all of you to announce this year's uh, NIRF. And on behalf of all of you, I like to thank the Honorable Minister to find time for this. Friends, uh, I start the session now. Uh, the session is titled as Quality, Ranking, and Accreditation. Friends, I have always believed ranking, rating, accreditation, all these are manifestations of quality. And our primary focus should be on quality, not on the symptoms of quality, not on the manifestations of quality. At times, I find people are crazy about accreditation. I like it as chairman NBA, but that's not the real solution to higher education. People are crazy about ranking. It's very good. We'll talk about how ranking has helped us, and particularly during the last year, last session, ministry took so much interest in ranking that we have made it to the international level also to a reasonably uh, a head extent since last year. But nonetheless, I personally feel focus has to be on quality. Other things will follow. If we don't follow the quality higher education, then it is something like uh, focusing on the symptoms and not on the disease uh, in a negative uh, uh, similarity. We have to focus on quality education. And that has been very, very amply clarified in national education policies at so many places. I think word quality has found mention at so many points in national education policy that it has become so very important to focus on quality. And during the last year, we have done too many sessions under the guidance of the minister, secretary, and uh, all that to see how do we improve in this. In particular, focus is on outcome-based education, which is the hallmark of uh, quality education. Because what I think will lead to a good, good graduate doesn't mean much unless he or she feels he has become a good graduate, unless the society feels he or she becomes a good graduate. And therefore, outcome-based education is the only method of education which can really deliver quality at the end of the road, and therefore, a lot of focus on this outcome-based education. As chairman, National Board of Accreditation, whenever I've been addressing the vice chancellors, addressing the colleges, I've been saying, don't bother about accreditation. We'll come with folded hands to give you accreditation. It's not an obligation which Board of Accreditation is doing on you. You believe in quality education, go ahead, and accreditation is your right. Ranking is your right. Rating is your right. So that's the focus on which we do. And uh, second statement which I like to make in national policy of education, at the very forefront of this is the student. That has been very clearly said. And there also, we have made a very clear statement in the policy. Our focus on examinations will not be what you do not know. It will be what you know. Similarly, I believe uh, accreditation systems will also have to tailor themselves to find what are the strong points of an institution. What are the strengths of a university rather than what are the weaknesses of a university? We are gradually trying to do that. I won't say we have done enough in that direction, but we have to do much more because ultimately every institution will become good in everything, will very rarely happen. We have to identify the strengths, leverage on the strengths, and go ahead further and further. An example which I always give, which I have read in a book on accreditation, he says, if you ask a fish, do you know how to climb a tree? And uh, she appears before you and she says, no, I can't. You say, you are useless. Come next year. It comes next year, again she can't. You say, you are useless. That does not mean nature has made fish useless. 
it has its own utility. We have to find out what the fish is good at and improve her skills in that direction. If she swims X today, maybe can she swim 1.5X next year? That has to be the target. Similarly, for each institution, we'll have to decide what are the strong points, what are the potentially strong points, and try to develop in that direction. So we'll have to work in the direction of uh, identifying the strengths of the institution. And finally, friends, I would like to say quality is to some extent subjective, to some extent perceptive, but nonetheless, we all understand what is quality in uh, some loose sense at least. And we are trying to now measure quality. There could be some pitfalls here and there, but we'll come over it slightly. And quality is temporal. What is quality today may not remain quality five years hence. We have seen very good universities in the country are going very bad because they could not maintain it. Quality is contextual, quality is temporal, and we will have to adjust accordingly. And finally, I like to make a point, friends, quality is something which impacts you for a long time to come. I think all of you in this hall will be able to find out some quality teachers who made your life, with, because of whom you are existing today. Uh, those teachers may not have taught you more number of hours. They may not have taught you with more number of stress, but they have given you quality which you understand. You, whether you are able, that may not be related to CGPA or percentage of marks, but that's the quality. So similarly, we are duty bound to give quality education to the students, which the Honorable Prime Minister also was stressing throughout in his uh, a speech yesterday, a student has to be the focus and quality education has to be the focus. With these few words, uh, I'll, if the time permits, I'll tell a small story which I have been inspired by Baba Vishwanathji here, but at the end of the session. Maybe now we will start the session with the panelists. I have a, a very strong team of panelists. I'll first request Professor Hemant Kumar, Vice Chancellor, University of Mysore, uh, to present his points. He wishes to talk about uh, linking quality and accreditation in some small measures. President Honorable Governor and Honorable Higher Education Minister and all of my colleagues from various parts of the country and my pa dear panelists, quality of education is something which is a multidimensional concept which involves the major functions, like functions of higher education, activities, teaching and, activi teaching and academic programs, research, scholars, and stopping and students, and all other infrastructure. Entire this NEP speaks, you will have to improve the quality so that the ranking of the institution is uh, improved. So we are uh, not at, in the top 100 ranks of in Indian universities, that is the target. So with this, we need to find out what are all the things we need to uh, change. First, primary, uh, most important thing is when you are implementing an EP, when you want to have the quality, first of all, our mindset should change. So the current world has been realized that economic uh, success of the states depends upon the quality of the education. So because the most effective factors that expresses in the production of the right human capital is very important for our country, not only in the knowledge, but in terms of skills and creative skills, where the NEP emphasis on skills and creative skills and creative abilities we need to create apart from the education. So these important dimensions of the quality of the education is we must have the equity, sustainability, and contextualization and relevance to this, and teaching learning outcomes. As uh, our chairman told, so it is teaching learning outcomes where uh, the learning-based, outcome-based education is one of the important concepts which comes. The main pillar of the quality education is uh, curriculum, instruction, and assessment, so which is uh, majorly covered by our national education policy. So good quality education provides all learners and economically productive, sustainably, which gives, and also sustainable livelihoods, and also induct uh, the person as a well-being person in the country.
So, and also you must be able to have the long life learning with the, we had to prepare the individual to have the long life learning. To provide the quality education, we need to train the students and think beyond the university education in the interest of the society and humankind. So this is possible because our country has got different types of the institutions. These institutions need to have the plan how to do it because first five years we need to plan how to make it for there are various government institutions are there, private universities are there, government universities are there and state universities are there. So we need to provide the proper infrastructure, the human infrastructure and also a, a proper training is required to implement this policy. So for that uh, I just say that we need to have a prospective plan of every institution such that we can increase the quality so that quality how it can be defined for every institution, for every region so that we need to plan. So for NEP implementation first level, so we need to take up first five years different plans and that has to be implemented. That implementation should be checked at every year where how, how far we have reached to enhance the quality of the institution so that the output of the output of the students and output which is coming out of the institution is uh, what we call excellence. With this excellence only we can achieve what we call something good in the quality. So with this uh, I will just leave this to us. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Hemant Kumar, for uh, very crisp but very important uh, observations made. Uh, next, I invite uh, Dr. Kathrisen, Vice Chancellor of Anamla University. Uh, he is primarily going to talk about his university's point of view from the accreditation and quality education. Thank you. Good morning, all of you, most respected chairman, honorable minister for education, governor of uh, Uttar Pradesh, and well, learned well, delegates. Morning, Thank you all for the opportunity. <coughs> I just look at uh, quality of education, and I was wondering about how to assess the quality of education. And uh, one of my teachers uh, told me the quality of education depends on the product of uh, the education. And first, let me take the parameter of uh, the quality of education uh, given by uh, university, Anamala University, which is uh, located uh, strategically disadvantaged, catering to four disadvantaged districts of Tamil Nadu, taking about uh, 20,000 students and campus, of which 40% <coughs> are SCST students, and often uh, prone to natural disasters. And this university has uh, produced one former president of India and one governor, three Padma Bhushan awardees, three Padma Shri awardees, one Padma Vibhushan awardees, and uh, scientists from NASA to International Food Policy Research Institute, Plant Protection Advisor to the Government of India. These are the quality of our alumni. Then coming to the quality of research and development, the university has been taking up uh, yesterday. Our Honorable Prime Minister was referring to lab to land, and uh, interdisciplinary research was much talked about. One such case study is uh, the university has brought out an excellent piece of uh, combining three different disciplines, fisheries, poultry, and agriculture. And we have given up technology wherein fish is grown along with uh, poultry birds and rice that has gone across the border to Nepal and other countries and SAC countries are taking up training. And we have introduced a flood tolerant rice which has saved 1,000 farmers over 1,500 acres in recurrent floods during 2018 in Kerala. So across languages, across borders, the outreach of the translational research has gone and transcended. And uh, we are out, now there are about 19 universities in Tamil Nadu, of which eight universities are led by vice chancellors who are alumni of Anamala University. So this is the quality of education the university has been doing. And regarding the publications and out, uh, uh, publication index, uh, Anamala, about 19 universities are there in Tamil Nadu, state universities of which Anamal University has one campus in a remote area with 40% SCST students, and we rank only number two next to Anna University in terms of H index and citations. And we have, we have got about 160 patents. So this is the quality of education we are uh, delivering, and with regard to international collaborations, we <coughs> collaborate with uh, Cornell University, FAO, IRRI, and we have 
the first and one and only state university in Tamil Nadu to have about 5% uh, of international students and students throughout all the 30 states of India. So this is about uh, an index of how the quality of education that we are delivering is uh, about. Coming to the accreditation, uh, and ours is a multidisciplinary university with uh, 10 faculties like engineering, medicine, arts, fine arts, education, yoga, music, uh, uh, etc. and 55 departments and I have recently taken over as vice chancellor and we have gone with uh, the NAC accreditation and after that last month we have gone with NBA accreditation for engineering and we have gone with ICR accreditation for fisheries and next month I am going to have ICR accreditation for agriculture. So for a multidisciplinary university like uh, Anamal University, which is being expected out of uh, the uh, education policy, there need to be a single window of accreditation for all the faculties, and that is the need of accreditation, and that will help us to leap uh, with giant steps ahead. And another thing is that, uh, in my opinion, my humble opinion, uh, accreditation needs to have some sort of uh, transparency and uh, it should be made user friendly the sense uh, even for students examination we give the answer sheets to them and expect them to uh, go for their uh, checking of the marks. In the case of accreditation a little more transparency and um, benchmarks to be made standard and made known to the higher education institutions which are subjecting themselves for accreditation because the benchmark the benchmarks we suppose they are a bit floating and uh, there is no hard uh, benchmark how much the institution will get depending on the documents they have that must be made available to the institutions as in a transparent manner. And again, we have difficulties in uh, getting over this transparency and I had a tough time in convincing my authorities like Syndicate and Academic Council for a revisit by NAC in the absence of a reason being assigned in spite of it being asked. Thank you and these are all my humble submissions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Katrasen, and uh, once again, thank you for keeping to the time and making a very useful point about several accreditation agencies and how to go about it. Uh, next, I'll invite Professor Vedya Subramanyam, Vice Chancellor Sastra. Uh, he has been with us in several discussions on the ranking framework uh, during the year, in particular, when we were trying to go ahead on the international rankings, how do we go about it is one thing. Secondly, international rankings and our system of education has some basic uh, differences, how to gel with it. For example, they attach too much importance to international diversity. Uh, we have been arguing with them, diversity between UP and Kerala is much more than diversity between Germany and England. And you talk about international diversity, but you don't really recognize the diversity, which is the really requirement of education. International boundary cannot be the only criteria for diversity. Second aspect which is lacking there is, they don't care about the unit cost. A country like India cannot afford not to think about unit cost of education and then talk about ranking. Uh, we have been uh, thinking somewhere down how much you have been able to deliver at what cost should also come in. So we were thinking, has the stage come where we can take NIRF to a little higher level beyond the country, if not global, maybe regional to some extent? And it is in this direction Dr. Subramanyam is going to make his comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Uh, Honorable Madam Governor, Honorable Minister for Education, distinguished fellow panelists, and uh, fellow educationists. Uh, I'm extremely happy to share my, the next five minutes on my thoughts on these three carefully worded uh, topic, quality, ranking, and accreditation. And uh, the job, to me, it's getting simpler because I thought of what I need to talk and then after listening to our Honorable Prime Minister's speech yesterday, to each of this topic, I just want to pick a thread from three very profound thoughts that the Prime Minister himself expressed in his inaugural speech yesterday. The first one that we have to think about higher education institutions not as degree granting instruments, but institutions that should enrich human development. 
So we are not preparing higher education institutions or universities uh, that treats a degree as a certificate to exit the campus, but we should make sure that the degree is a certificate to enter life. So now how is that possible? And he gave the lab to land and lab, land to lab analogy. And that is possible only if as academic leaders and participants in the higher education ecosystem, we realize, we should realize that higher education institution is not just about curriculum, assessment, pedagogy. And when we shorten our understanding of the broader purpose of higher education, then leadership will chase rankings, faculty will chase publications, students will chase placements, and then the casualty will be quality. Now we have to look at higher education institutions as an academic value chain and look at all activities in that ecosystem that can generate value. And to me, quality is the willingness to generate value, not only from the curriculum or the research or the assessment. I would say if you're running a very good hostel, there is quality as a derivative byproduct because you have a good hostel, a good mess, a good landscape, and apart from that good infrastructure, academic curriculum. So we have to look at higher education institution as an academic value chain of activities. And that is why I always feel that the vice chancellor or the head of the institution is not just vice chancellor of the university, but he should think as though he's the mayor of the city. So there are so many other issues that happen inside the university that also resonates and also impacts quality. That's the first point. The second on ranking, and that's, that's my crux of my presentation, is the Honorable Prime Minister also made this observation that we have to come out from the colonial hangover and that we cannot be servant class. And I'm extremely happy I will record at this point of time the impressive growth that our institutions have made in the global rankings. Times Higher Education or QS and all of its other derivative rankings as well. But then if you look at the rate of growth and the rate of participation of all institutions in the global rankings, that is still marginal. So we have to accelerate the rate of growth of other institutions which actually deliver 95% of education to other learners of the student community and ask the question ourselves, when are we going to elevate the quality of all the other institutions? Now, if all other institutions are capable of participating in the global rankings, we can definitely make a major impact. But that is a huge challenge. On the other hand, we have NIRF as an instrument that is available, which has the potential to again strengthen its resolve and become a very strong regional ranking agency and moving forward a global ranking agency. And that will be a true Atmanirbhar moment where other institutions outside India would run behind NIRF ranking and say, we also want to be ranked by NIRF. That's on ranking. And the last on accreditation, the Honorable Prime Minister mentioned in his very brief interaction with those a 15 minute interaction with the students there, he could measure the amount of creative talent that the students are displaying. Now, how can we measure the level of educatedness of our graduates coming out of the institution? If we are able to produce graduates who can solve the problems of the society, and our country being one sixth of global humanity, we can solve the problems of the world. That is the context behind which the learning, the outcome based learning has been conceptualized, and accreditation is a measure of that outcome based learning measures. And moving forward, NEP clearly says there is going to be only three types of institutions. Actually, we have to have an ideal mix of both ranking and rating. We have to come out with a creative formula that uses both ranking and rating. And because we have three types of institutions, research universities, teaching universities, and degree granting autonomous colleges, and change the mix of rating and ranking across these three types of institutions. And if we are able to do that, and in fact, I think as personally to me, that is a homework question that I ask myself, and also homework to all the distinguished educationists here. How can we come out with a creative ranking plus rating mix that can push Indian higher education to build a great future because we have a greater past. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good, well, Dr. Uh, Subramaniam, uh, I have been uh, reading what you write, and uh, we appreciate your thought process on this subject. Now we have uh, Professor Tiwari, who has passionately implemented quite a bit of NEP in his university. Uh, 
uh, let's say, his intervention on this subject. Honorable Governor of Uttar Pradesh, uh, the Dynamic uh, Education Minister of uh, Government of India, Minister of State, uh, my fellow panelists, uh, Chairman of this session, and uh, fellow colleagues. Uh, you know, I fully concur with the views of uh, opening remark of uh, our Chairman that uh, if we take care of the quality, ranking and accreditation will automatically be taken care of. And as far as I'm concerned, for me, the pedagogy is the, uh, at the core of quality. You know, if we want to prepare and develop competencies in our youth to face the challenges that the contemporary world is, uh, is, is uh, throwing upon them, and also to face the future challenges, then, uh, you know, we have to see the quality in uh, quality intent in our youth that uh, that is most and you know as we all know that our ancient india has been the leading uh, uh, education center in the entire world and there the pedagogy was at the core you know uh, as far as indian pedagogy is concerned uh, you know we talk about uh, the three stages of learning where the learning was in fact considered as a process and uh, three stages of learning were stipulated by our uh, Adi Sankracharya, Sraman, Manan, and Nidhi Dhyasana. In one of the sutis that was written around 4,000 years ago, uh, that defines education process uh, uh, in four stages. One, what the student listens in the classroom. Another, whatever information the student received from the teachers, he himself tries to analyze that, synthesize it, and try to make out some sense out of that. And the third stage is peer discussion, where with fellow colleagues, he will discuss whatever he has not understood and he will refine his or her thought process in that particular course module. And the fourth <coughs> one is evaluation. It is not the assessment assigning marks, but whatever uh, conclusion is arrived at in the earlier three stages of learning, that is applied in, in the form of experiential wisdom, to derive experiential wisdom and, and refine the knowledge so that that is useful to the society and to the nation. So that was the process of learning that was envisaged around 4,000 years ago in, in, in our country. And, uh, you know, now uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, chairman has said outcome-based education. That is very important. And e-education 4, now in the, we are in the fourth version of education called Education 4.0. And here, the entire focus is on outcome-based learning. And here, all the imperatives that are, that, that are the competencies that we want to see in our youth, those are in fact envisioned to meet the requirement of Industrial Revolution 4. So, you know, if that happens, now the issue is how to develop that type of competencies in our youth. So, for that, uh, you know, what we have done is that we have, uh, uh, in one third of the departments out of 44 programs that we are offering in the university, uh, in 33, 33% of these programs are offered on flip learning mode where students, teachers do not deliver lectures simply and provide information in the classroom. They give advanced uh, reading material to the students. They come prepared and entire classroom space is used for, you know, clearing their doubts, for uh, uh, telling them the application potential of the, piece of, inf from the piece of information and how that information can be put, how, how the knowledge that is arrived out of those information can be put into use. So this uh, type of outcome-based education only can bring quality in our learning system. And, you know, we have ample examples, you know, in our, uh, <coughs> in our ancient learning system, there used to be six types of gurus. And each type corresponded to the role model of six types of learning that are defined in Bloom's pedagogy. So, you know, and then, you know, uh, I, I will end with the remark that, you know, uh, you know, Pentium 1 came, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, now we are in 10. Likewise, our, uh, this all other electronic instruments are, uh, are the higher version is coming up. This is why, because they cannot meet the emerging requirements. So that is how each one of us, only quality can come when each one of us, every teacher of the country, presents his or her new version in every academic session with updating whatever has changes have happened in one year. And if we present ourselves as a new version of teacher every year, then only we can really impart quality to our learners and then only we can
do justice with the job that is assigned to us. This is what I wanted to say. Thank you, Jai Hind, Jai Bhava. Thank you, Professor Tiwari, for uh, excellent observations. Now we start the discussion on the subject, please. मेरा सादर आग्रह है कि अपने प्रश्नों को अत्यंत सक्षिप्त रखें और प्रत्येक व्यक्ति केवल एक ही प्रश्न पूछें। Yeah, sure. Hello. Uh, this is Professor Farooq, in charge, Vice Chancellor, Central University of Kashmir. Sir, yeah, you have rightly said that quality and, and we can't hear you. Just can you bring the mic closer or? Thank you. This is Professor Farooq, in charge, Vice Chancellor, Central University of Kashmir. Sir, you have rightly put it out that uh, quality and excellence is a relative constructual and temporal phenomenon. So my question is, despite continuous modification in the quality measurement methodology adopted by national ranking agencies like NAC and NBA, with more emphasis and shift to quantitative measures gradually, higher education institutions continue to manipulate the data. The practice kills the very essence and purpose of quality measurement and quality improvement. How can we deal about it? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the second part of the question to which I have a specific response is, as you rightly observed, you know, the race for ranking that institutions are running. So I always say this, you know, ranking has become a kind of a pranking exercise with the P being silent. So there is, you know, some, it's a data game. So that is why in the previous session, Professor Sridhar was also talking about ethical leadership also being one very important uh, dimension. So as uh, education leaders, we should ask ourselves the question, are we ethically discharging our leadership responsibilities in whatever little form that we are doing. And should we do this pranking? Let us be very honest in the academic pursuit as educational leaders that we are undertaking. And that way, you know, moving forward, we will definitely add incremental value and we will develop, definitely move in the quality ladder. Otherwise, this one will be very short term. And I will tell you, you know, ranking is a popularity exercise. Popularity will come with no invitation, but will leave with also no farewell also. So we have to be very ethical, and that will stay good for a long period of time. Uh, sir, very very uh, well said. By uh, Chancellor yeah. Patna University, yeah. uh, yes. we are discussing about ranking NBA NAC grading system. So I want to session ke madhyam se ye place karna chahta hun. कि जिस यूनिवर्सिटी का या कॉलेज का जो ग्रेड ए ग्रेड बी सी जो भी मिलता है रैंकिंग के हिसाब से एक रूसा है रूसा के तहत उसको ग्रांट दिया जाता है और कॉलेज और डेवलप होते जाता है लेकिन वैसे इंस्टीट्यूशन जिसको कि नैक ग्रेडिंग नहीं मिलता है उसको कोई सपोर्ट नहीं मिलता है इसके चलते क्या हो रहा है कि वो इंस्टीट्यूशन और पीछे चला जा रहा है इस तरह से दोनों के बीच में बहुत बड़ा खाई होते जा रहा है तो क्या इस खाई को हम लोग कैसे मेकअप करेंगे इन फ्यूचर कैसे सपोर्ट करेंगे जो कि पीछे के हाशिए में चलते जा रहे हैं विच यू सर थैंक यू सर सर आई एम प्रोफेसर भाले हेलो जस्ट अ मिनट आई टेक डाउन द क्वेश्चन एंड देन आंसर एट द एंड बिकॉज ऑफ देयर जनरल क्वेश्चन या प्लीज प्रोफेसर अग्रवाल साहब Uh, एक प्रश्न आपसे है आपसे रिलेटेड अब तक जो क्वालिटी असेसमेंट uh, के लिए हम जाते हैं हैदराबाद का कॉलेज कोरापुट का कॉलेज में एक ही मानदंड के साथ हमको देखना पड़ता है जो रूरल एरियाज में और ट्राइबल एरियाज में जो कॉलेजेस हैं यूनिवर्सिटीज हैं और सिटीज में टाउन्स में वेल प्लेस एंड एस्टेब्लिश्ड स्पेशली कर्नाटक में तमिलनाडु में केरल में और हम ओडिशा में नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स के या सेंट्रल पार्ट ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश में रहने वाले कॉलेजेस में हम जाएंगे तो स्थिति में बहुत समझिए कि 50 50 परसेंट अंतर है लेकिन हम हमारा मेजरमेंट एक ही होता है इसको सीरियसली कुछ करना चाहिए अदरवाइज गरीब लोग गरीब होते जाएंगे थैंक यू सर 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 जस्ट वन कम हेलो सर जस्ट वन स्मॉल आई एम स्टैंडिंग सर प्रोफेसर भालेराव हियर फ्रॉम सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ राजस्थान आई हैव 
some question regarding two sub points of the NIRF. The one point is the perception. One criteria is the perception. Uh, always, uh, the uh, I mean, uh, opinion about the university and institutions are asked from the peers. But sometimes the information about the university in Delhi and uh, from the person or from the peer from the Kerala, I mean, he may not be knowing about that one. So how do we cope up all this one? That is the mainly issue in this one. Second point is the about the scholarship. NIRF asks, uh, are there any institutionally led scholarships? And if uh, to institutions or universities <coughs> to uh, start the scholarships is sometimes difficult from the rules and regulation point of view also. And there we lose the marks unnecessarily. So these two points are very important, sir. Thank you. So this is Dr. Karmarkar. Just a minute, sir. Dr. Uh, I'm Dr. Gopal, Director NIT Goa. I represent NIT Systems. Sir, uh, basically if you go, we have two terms called excellence and relevance. We focus on excellence, but unfortunately the relevance part is missing in our teaching learning process. That's why in Upanishad said, Sa Vidhyaya Vimuktaye. That means the real education is the education which helps the student to come out of the clutches of the problems of the world. Does our system address that, number one? Second thing is, sir, I have been a part of NIT, uh, NBA for more than 50 institutions. I find there are institutions that are 10 year old, there are 30 year old, there are 50 year old. Like uh, some students are in primary school, some are in high school, some are in college. But if you give the same question to all the student, definitely you can't expect the same result. I should say that the accreditation process, some other things, because the parents are ultimately the accredited, best accreditors. I, I thought, I, I, because I've been involved with the Washington Accord also, we should seriously address to the different sets of the institutions, different question papers. Thank you, sir. So, so can I? Namaskar, can Agarwal, sir. I am Vidyut Chakravarti, Vishwabharati. I have seen the mark darshan of the Pradhan land to lab and lab to land, and holistic, uh, holistic development of education. I want to ask you both of these two questions. One thing is, in this case, there are historical roots. वो हम लोग बिल्कुल भूल गए रविंद्रनाथ टेगोर ने 1921 में जब विश्व भारती बनाया था तब गुरुदेव ने पांच ग्राम को दत्तक लिया था और वो ग्राम करते करते आज साठ में आया तो वही टेक केयर ऑफ दी रिस्पांसिबिलिटी ऑफ द विलेजेस वही प्रोवाइड देम स्किल बिकॉज़ गुरुदेव मानते थे इंस्टेड ऑफ गिविंग देम आल्स ल we will have to think about the Vishwabharati model, which Tagore started in 1921, and probably we will have to, we can, you know, have a model to reframe our education according to that one. Ko yehi and secondly, hai. and second point is education. Uh, NIRF ranking on NAC. Nee, nee, NAC Time constraints. Mera, mera mera saal to puchhe dije agla sa bhai. NIRF or NAC ranking ke baare mein mera ek request hai, jo request mein pehle bhi bataya tha. तक विश्व भारती ऐसा एक इंस्टीट्यूशन है जहाँ पे संगीत भवन, कला भवन और शिल्प शोधर है, जहाँ पे जाने माने कलाकार, जाने माने संगीतकार, जाने माने पोट्रीज़ ये सब लोग हैं। जब एनआईआरएफ और नैप नैक रैंकिंग होता है, we don't take into account their contribution. We always assess the university's role or university's ranking on the basis of published paper, on the basis of you know what is called impact factor. Now, for these people, for instance, if I want to appoint Zakir Hussain, we cannot have his publication. We will have to go by his quality. So, I think please keep that in mind so that they are assessed differently. University like Shama Vishwarthi will be assessed differently. Shama Karenge, sir, I request that with this, we will be able to do a lot of concluding notes in this session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Friends, the uh, topic was such, so discussion was expected. I'm sorry we had to cut short the discussion because of the time. But I thought let me react to some of the observations made before closing the session. It's very true that the diversity of institutions which we have in this country is very large. And to assess them on the same parameters is not very fair at times. But to devise a fair strategy to 
uh, compartmentalize the institutions into different categories is even more difficult. We are trying to attempt for this. And if I use the English terminology, it's a million dollars question. And uh, uh, how to handle it is not very easy. But we do appreciate and are working in that direction. One of the suggestions which I had given at one point of time is, just like in corporate world, they will sit with an employee across the table and draw what are your expectations from you next year. Similarly, can we draw an expectation report from every university as UGC or uh, as a higher education commission or ministry or whatever? We know each university, can we draw a plan as to what is expected from your university given the location, given the number of students, given the, given the funds, given the professional distributions, and so on and so forth, and then assess you accordingly. It's a difficult thing, but could be one of the possibilities on which we could work upon. A very relevant observation was made that we give grants based on performance. So higher better performing institutions get more grants, and therefore, relatively poor institutions still get less grants because it is the same and they keep on becoming poorer. Uh, a very valid observation, once again, has come to our mind thousand times. But again, how do you incentivize the good performance? It is the same. So it's again a, a difficult question. Do we really reward the more better performing institutions or do we not give them money or incentives and give it to others? Uh, similarly, it was uh, raised the question between excellence and uh, relevance. I, I think there we are making some headway uh, during the last year and last two years after NEP. For example, now multidisciplinarity is being realized as a recognized as a part of the accreditation process, as a part of the ranking process to some extent. We'll have to carry it forward much beyond and so on and so forth. So not that these things are not being done, and uh, uh, Professor Vedra Subramaniam gave himself a homework for integrating accreditation and ranking. Uh, I think uh, Honorable Minister will approve his assignment and uh, uh, we will all collaborate with him in that homework because that is really required for a large country like this. Friends, the session will have to uh, come to close. The problems are many. Accreditation, ranking, rating are issues which will remain for quite some time. Probably will remain forever because they can never be completely resolved. But nonetheless, we have to keep on making a, a step further. I told you in the beginning that I'll tell a story for a minute, which I told about 10 years ago. Somebody asked Maryada Purushottam Ram, ने लंका को बर्बाद कर दिया इतने लोगों को मार दिया ऐसा क्यों किया उन्होंने क्या क्योंकि रावण ने सीता का अपहरण कर लिया था और छोड़ने को तैयार नहीं था उन्होंने कहा सीता का अपहरण क्यों किया कि वो जंगल में थी और वो ले गया तो जंगल क्यों गए थे क्योंकि दशरथ जी ने के कई को दो वर दिए थे वर क्यों दिए थे क्योंकि युद्ध में के कई ने अपनी आम से उनके रथ को बचाया था जबकि वो रथ का पहिया अलग हो रहा था क्योंकि उसकी पिन की क्वालिटी खराब थी और वो रथ गिर रहा था तो एक पिन की क्वालिटी की वजह से हमारे देश का बहुत बड़ा इतिहास लिखा गया तो मुझे लगता है शायद बहुत से स्टूडेंट्स की क्वालिटी के साथ हमने बहुत कुछ ठीक नहीं किया हुआ वो बहुत बड़ा इतिहास बन सकता है हमने उसको जानबूझ के बहुत नहीं उजाला फॉर एग्जांपल इतनी पुअर एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी क्यों है आज़ादी के बाद हमारा एक भी नोबल प्राइज़ क्यों नहीं है हमारे नंबर ऑफ पब्लिक पब्लिकेशंस बढ़ रहे हैं पर साइटेशंस नहीं बढ़ रहे इन चीज़ों की तरफ हमें हिस्टोरिकली ध्यान दे के आगे बढ़ना पड़ेगा इन शब्दों के साथ मैं आप सब का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूँ विशेष तर पैनलिस्ट का जिन्होंने बहुत उपयोगी कंट्रीब्यूशंस दिए ऑडियंस का एंड ऑर्गेनाइजर्स का जिन्होंने मुझे ये अवसर दिया धन्यवाद थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर विद दिस वी हैव रीच द एंड ऑफ द फोर्थ सेशन